Hi, this is Tapcat, and today I want to help you kill the Viper King. The Viper King is the first alien ruler you'll encounter as part of the Alien Hunters DLC. And we'll go through his abilities first and then talk about how to counteract them in just a couple of minutes. One of the defining characteristics of all the rulers is that they react every time one of your soldiers takes an action. Now, simply put, you'll take an action and then he will immediately get to respond in kind. And throughout your turn, as each one of your soldiers does something, he will get to take an action of his own. So he gets to both attack and move multiple times in a single turn, and that makes him extremely dangerous. Now the one small consolation to this is that he only gets the reaction phases. When all the other aliens are doing something on the alien activity turn, he won't. So he'll never get two actions in a row before you at least have a chance to do something. But wait, there's more. His health ranges from 44 on Rookie all the way up to 69 on Legend difficulty. On top of that, he'll have three armor on Legend and two on the other difficulty levels. Like regular Vipers, he has a chance to dodge any hits you might land, and that makes chipping away at his enormous health bar even more painfully difficult. Another ability he shares with Vipers is the Tongue Pull, which will haul in one of your soldiers but his has a little extra oomph to it. When he binds your soldier, he'll squeeze for two to four health and have a 50% chance to knock him unconscious. And that takes effect each reaction phase, not each turn, but each reaction, you'll take the damage and have a chance to be knocked out. One area where he differs from normal Vipers is in his breath weapon. Rather than poison, he spits a frost cloud that freezes any soldier caught in a blast for two turns. And that leaves them unable to do anything at all during that time. Now, in my encounters with him, he's tended to favor these abilities over a straightforward attack. But when the mood strikes him, he will shoot at you with a bolt caster that deals four to six damage. And finally, he has the ability to summon a psionic gate, and he'll do this either after enough time has passed, or he's taken enough damage to drive him off. Usually, it seems to be about one-third of his total health pool. Now, once he opens the gate, you'll have exactly one action left before he runs away. If he does make it through the gate, then you can look forward to meeting him again during a future mission, when he'll have the same amount of remaining health and armor that he did when he escaped. So allow me to summarize all of the above. The Viper King can really tear up a squad. If you meet him early in the game, I can all but promise that some of your troops are going home in body bags. And if you're still using the starter armor and weapons, you'll feel like you're trying to chop down a redwood tree with a kitchen knife. While he's easily killing your soldiers with his crush move as well as the bolt caster. And that brings me to my first piece of advice. Do not fight him early. At some point, you're going to be offered a chance to scan for what they call a triangulated position. Now go ahead and do that. But then you'll be offered a mission and Bradford will offer to lead the team. That mission location will be marked on your global map and it will never expire. You can wait as long as you like before going. So avoid it until you've upgraded your entire squad's weapons to magnetic level and bought the second tier of armor as well. And while you're at it, try and get dragon rounds and plasma grenades at a minimum from the proving grounds. You want to go in loaded for bear. Now, once you do go on that mission and you have to fight him, the first step is to try and punch through that armor. Now, thankfully, that shouldn't be too difficult if you have waited. An acid grenade or bomb would be ideal because it not only gets rid of the armor, it'll establish burn damage. 
but in truth, almost any variety of upgraded grenade will help shred that armor. And a grenadier with the shredder ability would also make a good start. Now, speaking of grenadiers, they tend to be very useful in this encounter overall. If you've managed to get one to Colonel, then leading off a turn with Rupture will help all of your other soldiers do more damage. And a Grenadier with Heavy Ordnance can get an extra use out of the Frost Bomb. Okay, now why does that matter? Well, because the Frost Bomb will freeze the Viper King and deny him three reaction phases. And this is a key point. Those constant reactions are his most devastating ability that make fighting him so difficult. Whenever possible, we want to deny him all those extra actions. So first, keep in mind that every action you take triggers this. Moving and reloading give him the same opportunity to do something that attacking does. So measure your actions carefully. If you do need to move a long distance, do it on a dash, which is one action, rather than moving two separate times. But ask yourself if you truly need to move at all, or if you can stay put, is it likely that he'll move toward you a little later in the turn? Now in the end, of course, you are going to have to take actions to win this fight. And so the Frost Bomb is one way to shut him down while you do. Another is to take advantage of so-called free actions. Now these are things you can do that don't count as one of the two actions a soldier get each turn. So these are useful at any time for sure, but they're doubly so here because they don't trigger that reaction phase. So what are some specific examples of that? Throwing the hunter's ax, using an armor's grappling hook to move, and a gunslinger using the lightning hands attack. Another way to get extra value out of a single action is to use the sharpshooter ability kill zone. Now it'll be triggered every time the Viper King moves, even if that happens multiple times within that one turn. So for once, all of his extra reactions will actually have a chance you know, to work partly to your benefit. Now you can also shoot him with the bolt caster and that'll give you a chance to stun him. And if you do, of course, he won't react while he's stunned. Just remember, it's great if that happens, but stuns aren't guaranteed. Also remember, you're going to have to reload the bolt caster after every shot. So you could actually end up losing more of your actions than you take from him, depending on how lucky you get with those stun rolls. So, if you've upgraded your ranger's sword or the hunter's axe to the second tier, they'll also have a chance to stun him. Just be aware, if you move into melee range, he's very likely to use his bind and crush move. Now we'll talk a little bit more about that trick in a minute, but for now, let's stick to ways we can hamper him. Now flashbang grenades are another option. They'll reduce his mobility and aim. Venom rounds will have a similar effect. Now, sadly, uh, normally Mimic Beacons are you, my favorite form of crowd control in this game, uh, but all of the alien rulers typically ignore them completely. And if you use one at all during this fight, it should only be to occupy other aliens in the area that are sufficiently dangerous that you feel like it's worth spending even one precious action, you know, in the midst of fighting the king to deal with them. Okay, now let's go back to his Python-like ability to crush your soldiers. Now, there's a very good chance that your trooper will be knocked unconscious if you don't free him immediately after he's grabbed. To keep from losing him for the rest of the fight, find a way to do some damage to the king with your very next action. Now be warned that he may just grab that same soldier again on his next reaction, but if he does, you'll just simply have to respond again because there's no real way to prevent that. So what are the different ways to cause damage and free your soldier? Uh, well, you know, shooting him in the face is always good. A carefully placed grenade can free your soldier without hurting him. And combat protocol will also do the trick. But 
Arguably, the best approach is to stack damage over time effects on him uh, whenever you get the chance, as that will hurt him again and again without you having to lift a finger. So for example, let's say you shoot him with dragon rounds. He'll take burn damage every single reaction phase until that flame goes out. If he grabs anyone during that time and tries to crush them, he'll automatically let them go when he takes that damage. Now, I also want to stress here, even if you don't think he's on the verge of grabbing somebody, just putting the burn damage on him is a goal worthy, you know, itself. Because if you could keep him on fire for most of the fight, you'll have gone a long way toward driving him off or even killing him. Uh, acid grenades and venom rounds also will put damage on him over time. Uh, they just don't do quite as much. Now, another way to get at the Viper King, this is a thoroughly unreliable but potentially enjoyable strategy, and that's to equip everyone's weapon with the best repeaters you can scrounge up and see if you can score an instant kill because yes, it is possible to execute alien rulers. Now, as a side note, uh, keep in mind that he has that frost breath so as you're doing all of these different things, do not cluster your soldiers tightly together. Getting half your squad frozen solid at one time is not going to be helpful. And more than any other fight, please remember when fighting alien rulers that this is a turn-based game. Don't get rattled, don't panic and rush. You have time to think, so use it. Figure out which ability or weapon will help you most when used first and what should be held for later. Just keep your cool, use the resources available to you, and his days are numbered. Alright, if you've made it this far, then hopefully you found this video helpful. If so, please give it a like so other people can find it too. And if you want to see more here on the channel, then by all means hit the subscribe button. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. I hope we see you next time.